All right, everybody, this is Sheets along with Kenny. Bobby's out uh, for, with a family issue for a couple of days. So uh, Kenny and I are gonna be handling today, uh, this week's uh, Wells Fargo uh, Open. Um, I guess we're a week away from the uh, PGA Championship, but, uh, or maybe two weeks, I'm not even sure, but still 250,000 first in the lottery, among other, uh, among other uh, great prizes. And uh, I, I really want to get your opinion on some of this because the way, the way I built when I first ran stuff is just going to be a little bit, I don't want to say nuts, but a little, a little weird. Actually, it's not weird. It's pr pretty standard the way I usually build, but I'm probably just going to lose if I do it. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, but hopefully we can continue our normal trend of, of one of us always doing well and the other one doing poorly when the other one does well. This way, <laughs> this way we, we, we always have some happiness. Um, with yeah. the, the DFS community. So the one thing that I that I noticed about the, you know, based on the research, I guess about this course is that is that you got to keep it in the fairway. You know that right. that, that it's uh, you know uh, when we looked at I don't, when I looked at Rick's video, he was actually saying that it's the number one rated course for driving accuracy in the entire PGA Tour. Um, oh, crazy! Which is pretty crazy. So. Um, that, uh, you know, that leads you to a certain, certain types of guys, but what I'm going to do, we'll do the same thing we always do. I'll, 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 you know, we'll go tier by tier, then we'll do the little contest and see, uh, see how things go. So okay. what, what, what do you like here in, 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 10 K and up, if anything? So in 10 K and up, um, you know, really the whole slate, uh, doesn't, doesn't really get interesting to me until like the seven K range, because it's just everything I'd like is just chalk. So um, really in the 10K range, and I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, Fitzpatrick is ranked to not be one of the highest owned uh, in this range. Um, and so that's probably where I'm gonna be focusing. I liked him before ownerships projections kind of came out and I was glad to see that, um, you know, he wasn't as heavy. Like I, I you know, Rory at the top, uh, you know, I'm, I'll definitely have some exposure to him, but probably in builds where I'm trying to get, you know, two 10 K guys or Rory and like, you know, uh, top of the nine K range kind of thing. Um, because I like so much the bottom range and I think it's just easier to kind of focus on some, uh, you know, get some, get some hard takes in on the lower range. So the top range here, um, really it's just fits for me. And then, you know, some exposure to Rory cause you can't not. Yeah, um, you know, I think of the guys in the in the in the 10K range, um, I mean, I guess I like Rory the best, big, big surprise. And then and then Connors and Fitzpatrick. I think both of them are gonna get get, get ownership. But I think I agree with you overall on, on the slate is that it is that the interest really starts to generate for me as you go down in price. Right. Um, and as we get to some of it. You know, uh, this this could end up being a, a chalky build the way I'm, I'm considering this. But when I ran my first bunch of lineups with my uh, whatever, um, I got zero of these 10 Ks. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So, well, I mean, uh, it's not surprising because there's so much, you know, that like in the eight and nine K range, there's that's like where everyone's probably going to play, you know, so um, it makes sense. I. And, and, and the fact that there's only, you know, five guys or what is it? I guess there's, yeah, six or no, no, there's five uh, that are in the 10K range and Rory is by far and away the best. I mean, you know, Finau was in the 10K range last week and played second and, you know, did really well, but it just is, you know, a thousand dollar jump there. And then, you know, you get into a bunch of juicy stuff. So it makes sense to me if you're just totally fading the 10K range. I do think... Um, you know, Rory is going to be hard to avoid just because he does have such a good chance at the top five. Um, but you know, with the highest projected ownership or close to it on in this range, uh, and really across the slate, <laughs> I think he's, is he, he's projected to be the highest owned everywhere, just like Rom was last week. Right. So he, you know, if he, if he wins it like Rom did last week, then I guess you got to kind of have some, some of them, but if he doesn't, you don't, you know, so it's easy to get out of the range. Yep. Uh, what about uh, guys below 10K? How about, how about 9,900 all the way down to 9K? You only have a handful of these. Do you like any of these dudes? Yeah, so I like Leishman. 
Um, and I'm glad to see that he's projected to not be, uh, you know, crazy owned as well. Um, so I'm going to probably be heaviest on him in terms of like the top of my builds um, and, and, you know, kind of swapping him out for Fitzpatrick and maybe Rory. But um, I'm going to be leading pretty heavy on Leishman. He's been playing great. Um, you know, I know he's not uh, the most accurate and the best off the tee here, but, um, you know, just I think he can make up for it, um, you know, with the rest of his game, especially um, we're looking at some weather this weekend. It's definitely going to rain on Friday. That's going to change things a little bit in terms of, uh, you know, guys who can make up for it on approach. They can stick the ball because it's going to be soft and wet and, uh, you know, maybe some errant tee shots, things like that, be able to make up for in uh, tee to green overall. And, uh, you know, Leishman does fine in those categories. Yeah, my the only guy I really have much interest in in, in the nine K, according to what I have, is uh, is Henley, and he's always popular. You know, he he is. I mean, he always looks good. He's always priced fairly. You know, and he's going to be twenty percent as usual. Um, and he's really the only guy that I like in the range. Um, I, the next guy I have would be Keegan Bradley, but he's twenty percent also, and he's down the list. So you know, I'm. As I kind of alluded to, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of off of this. I mean, I like Henley, but aside from that, I mean, my 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 real player pool doesn't get rolling until we get into the eight Ks. If you want to know the truth, so yeah, um, yeah, same. So uh, speaking of which, I guess I'll just kind of start with the eight Ks. Like my my top overall play for now on the board is Cameron Young, and it's not exactly the greatest uh, course fit for him, you know. Um, but it's kind of weird to say because he hits it far, it's a bad course fit. I, it's, I, I don't even want to, you know, um, right. I, I, he's AK, he's playing great and, and he's showing up great in my, in my numbers. And he's, I don't have him as that chalk yet. I like 14%, whatever it is, but I think that's fine. And then I got a whole bunch of this other guys, I mean, like KC at 8,800. I like that. Seems to be a good course fit. I mean, how do you not play web in a situation like this? I don't know. Um, I can't imagine 10% ownership is going to be accurate. I have to imagine he's, he's got to be on more, I would think, but um, I like that. And then Seamus power. I like him. All these guys like right around 10%. So Seamus power. And then I even got two more. I got Sergio who I don't usually play. And then I got kind of the, the chalkiest of all of them. I don't know why he's, I don't know why he's getting all the ownership, but I see Max Homa getting like 18%. Um, I don't see why he's any better than the others. I mean, I still like him, but um, I, I think all of those guys are just really, really good plays. And, and I'm going to probably have just, just, just carloads of all of that. That's interesting. So I think it does kind of make sense that Homa is projected to be the highest in this range, just because, um, you know, he's kind of picking up some momentum. He's, uh, you know, expected to, you know, kind of catapult into the top of the elite golfers, I think this season uh, in a lot of people's opinions. And, um, you know, he, he, he's been playing great and, you know, he's, he's got all the parts of the game together and it's not the strongest field, but uh, I agree with you. I don't think um, he's necessarily ahead above anyone else in the range here. Um, so, it, you know, for me, that's kind of an easy fade, uh, which I'm sad to say, cause I'm a, a fan of his, but um I also, I'm, I'm on board with you on Cam Young. Um, you know, he's been playing great. I've been going back to him over and over and, you know, he, he does well and he's starting to get a little bit more uh, pricey and I think he deserves that, but I'm okay with that, you know. Um, I also like, uh, so the other two guys that you didn't mention are the ones I, I, I like, uh, which is Siwoo and, and Jason Day. Um, you know, Siwoo, I think is, you know, he's been playing great. I know that there's a lot of people that think that he can only play, um, you know, on Pete Dye courses, but, uh, you know, he's, well, he's second in, no, that's not true. Is that true? He's third ranked in the range off the tee. Um, and, you know, it's another one of those, uh, you know, like I'm saying, you know, some of the things that typically I think are going to be uh, looked at for stats on the course are going to be kind of negated by some of the rain and the soft conditions here. So, um, you know, I think he's, he's got the, he's got the approach game. He's got the, uh, around the greens. Um, 
you know, so I, and, and he's ranked lower in the, in the field here in ownership. And that's also why I'm, I'm going to be on Jason day is just kind of, kind of purely an ownership play in the range here. Yeah. The Jason day at 5% uh, is seems, seems pretty, uh, pretty appealing, you know? Uh, uh, and, and again, you, you, I think about this a lot. When, when, I, when I started doing DFS and when I started to go on a projection based, you know, approach to pretty much all the sports is that the first thing I have to do is I, I do the numbers based on what I think. And then I always say, okay, how am I fading myself? You know what I mean? Like if I'm, if I'm putting this together, then it's going to be very, you know, common for other people to do something similar. And one thing about golf, as I've noticed, is that the, the variance between the projections of, across the industry is very small uh, relative to other sports. Um, it's very, very tight. So everybody's seen pretty much the same stuff. Um, right. So, so, so when, when I see like that, I have a bunch like these 8100s and these 8200s and you, and you give me kind of the go ahead to play a Jason day and he's going to be like one, at least uh, you know half the ownership of any of these guys. Um, right. I, I, th I think that's uh, I think that's really sharp. Um, and uh, I'm definitely going to probably force some of that in. Um, Saberson will probably give me that anyway, just because he's like 5%. Um, right, right. But uh, if not, that's, that's like a perfect, perfect idea of someone to just, to just get in there. What do you think of Sergio, by the way? Because whenever I think of these other, you know, these, these non kind of cool kid names, you know, like Sergio and Jason Day, and whatever I think yeah. of, I think of you, cause you have a you have a good eye on those types of guys. Are you, are you still high on Sergio or do you see? I do like, I do like Sergio. Um, I, you know, I, said at the beginning of the season, I think he's going to have a great season. He, you know, has been seeming to get his game back together, like his old form. Um, and, you know, he rates out well on the course too, turns out. I mean, he's great off the tee. Uh, you know, he's pretty accurate. Um, and I think uh, he's, you know, also one of the lower ownerships kind of around here. So, you know, why not Sergio? Yep. Yeah, I like it. Um, all right. So, 7k is just just all just a zillion zillion guys so why don't you just um why don't you do yo tell me tell me your top five i guess with with uh given ownership given however you however you want to rank them. okay so um my top two guys uh are <clears throat> pretty much far and away at the top of the 7k range here interesting uh is aaron rye and johnny vegas um both of them have been playing amazingly lately. Um, <clears throat> both of them, you know, just light up all the stats uh, that you want to see this week. And both of them are, you know, <laughs> projected to be pretty low owned, uh, you know, maybe a little over 5% or so uh, for Aaron Rye and, and under that for Vegas. So um, at least that's what I'm, I guess, or I guess we have uh, Vegas at like almost six too, but still, um, that's totally fine with me. These guys are going to be all over my lineups. Um, then I also like uh, Doug Gim uh, and Lanto Griffin, who I think is a great play this week at, you know, the lowest in the range in ownership and, um, you know, has been playing great. I think he's going to be overlooked. I don't think any, there's any reason anyone's going to get sneaky and pick him out. And I think he has a great shot at, um, you know, placing top 15, maybe, uh, which would be great for this, you know, salary range. And then lastly, uh, and I'm just, uh, above 7,500 here. Um, I have a whole other set of guys below 7,500. Um, and then lastly, in the top of the seven K's, uh, I'll be on, will be Neesmith, Matthew Neesmith, who's also so, been playing great ranks out well. And, um, you know, I expect I just have a really solid. So, so we're just, we're just doing 7,500 up. Yeah, just because okay. I, that's how I broke it up. Just because there's, okay. you know, I've got a whole other list of names. There's so many more down below, you know. So, 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 so Kenny and I, as, as I mentioned, the same thing about Bobby. Kenny and I never talk about the stuff ahead of time, and um, you know, it's it's very interesting because there's like a zillion guys in the 75 to 7900 range, and my top guy is literally his top guy, Jonathan Vegas. Okay, so 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 that the odds of that happening is extremely small. So I can promise you, he's not making the cut. Now, now, that, now, that, now, that, now, that, now that we took care of because that. we both like him because we both love him yeah that's, that's, that, that, now we know that for sure now i know i'm picking that they make the cut but uh no i mean honestly i mean this is this is this is this is what i do what i do with content providers when you have two different two different people that use different different methods sort of to come up and come up with the same freaking thing and it's low owned you just kind of have to play it you know what i mean so right. 
Right. So, so I like that a lot. Now, again, the reason why it's going to be low, it's not, ex- it, look, it's not exactly the greatest course fit. You know what I mean? Like, cause he right. hits it really far, not the most accurate, but you know what? Yeah, it's what, what, what's why he's 5% as opposed to, as opposed, right. as opposed to, for example, a guy like Brian Harmon, who, who I like a lot also, but he just looks like a guy who's going to keep it accurate. He just does. And that's why he's going to be over 10%, you know, and that's, that's, right. uh, that's the way that goes. I do happen to like him. But um, but as far and I like you know Keith Mitchell too. But these are like over ten percent guys. I I'd even play Kevin Streelman. But again, he's going to be whatever. Uh, I, K- K- CT Pan, he, I like him too. But you tell me Vegas is half the price of half the ownership of all these guys. I mean, he's going to get. I mean, he's going to be he's going to be a hell of a lot more than five percent in my lineups. So let's put it that way. Um, right. Right. What do you so? What, what are your favorites under uh, under uh, you know seventy five hundred or less or seventy four hundred? So less? yeah, so seventy five hundred or less. Um, I like uh, where is it? Oh, Brennan Wu, um, mm-hmm. who's been playing great. I think you know. Also, see the see the guy that got second last week. Yep. Okay. Uh, yep. And I think that there's a lot of momentum for these guys that played last week in you know a field where it's kind of a similar construction. There's a couple of guys at the top that are all stars and the rest of the field is kind of spread across, you know, there's a lot of, this is why the interest to us is, is in this, you know, sub 8k range this week. You know what I mean? Um, I also like uh, David Lipsky uh, a lot here. He's been on a tear and also, um, you know, I think is going to be pretty low owned just because he doesn't look like the best course fit here. Um, and I'm fine with that this week, really, because it's, uh, you know, I think, like I said, I think that there could be makeup on Friday with rain. Um, you know, there's too much variance in golf anyway. Um, also, Troy Merritt, um, who's going to be a little bit more chalky, but I'll probably have some exposure to because I do think, um, you know, he has a decent ch- chance at uh, getting in the top 10 or something like that. And, you know, even if, if he's around 10% or whatever, it's still, um, you know, a great play in the range here, I think. Uh then I also like Brennan Steele, Kurt Kitayama. Uh, oh, I'm also going to really like, um, I, I think is, uh, what's his name? Hubbard. Uh, he's, so looking at his stats, um, you know, it looks like he just really hasn't played a whole lot, but he's in between the PGA Tour events he's played. He's been like doing fantastic on the Corn Ferry Tour and he's been switching back and forth. Um, and I think, you know, he's going to be probably even lower owned than he's projected, which isn't high. Um, so I really like him this week. And uh, again, going to be going back um, just because Bobby has me convinced uh, that he's going to be, you know, on one is uh, Doc Redman this week. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm going to go back to Alex Smalley as my favorite. And, and this is, this is my, this is my, yeah. issue, Alex so I, I liked, I like him too. I, I wrote in my notes, Smalley kinda. <laughs> so here's, but, here, uh, here, here, so here's the, here's the issues I've had with Smalley. So, so when, whenever I have him and he does well, like I had him when he was T6 and I had him when he was T2, of course, when like my studs like bust, you know what I mean? Like oh, when my right. studs bust, I, my Smalley's come in. And when all I need is Smalley to make the cut and everybody else is doing well, then, then he busts, you know? So, so he's been, uh, you know, this is, this is, this looks like the perfect, you know, um, results uh, band of a GPP type play. You know? Right. Right. Cut T2, cut, cut T6. Um, right. So he's probably my favorite, but, but, you know, like I said, everybody's really close um, to, to not even to re- reiterate the guys you said, who I have no issues with. I'll throw in, uh, I don't even know if you got to these guys, but Martin Laird, I like in there. And uh, and Luke List, he's another guy. I literally, have never done anything with. But um, so I, 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 you know, all these guys look good. Um, it's seven, all the seven Ks, and and this, you think about this, and this is why, you know, I I don't see Rory in my future this week. Um, I just just right. too many ways for me to not play him. I think, um, and this could be one of those weird weeks where he wins, and 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 you don't need him uh right right it's very possible well if you get you know if, if you get three or four guys in a lineup uh that, that are down in this range and you know around the five percent or less ownership and they all top 10 you know you're you're looking pretty good you like know, it, you like you like, very, like any of like any of the like any of the garbage here or uh i like a little bit of it um i like scott piercy 
who's okay. just had a fantastic stretch the past few tournaments yeah. uh, and, you know, got 11th here last year. Um, also, you know, doesn't rank out well and is one of the lowest projected uh, on the slate. Um, I also like Steven Yeager, who I think, you know, everyone's kind of onto. I think that he's going to get a little bit more ownership than we think just because he's been doing well and there's been a lot of talk about him lately. Um, also, maybe a little bit of Tyler Duncan, who, uh, you know, just kind of has, looks like he rates out really great for the course, uh, honestly, just looking at him. And then I'm also going to be, I actually really like uh, Ryan Armour this week, which is kind of a weird one, but um, I think he also kind of rates out well. I think he's, you know, he's going to be sub 1% owned. And, um, you know, I think just looking at, what was it that I saw? But he, oh, I can't remember what it was. Also, oh, also, uh, <laughs> and and Bobby hates it every time I, I like this guy because he doesn't play often. Uh, it, Rory Rory Sabatini. Actually. Oh, absolutely. Other, other Rory. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the one the one guy I have that rates okay here is uh, is K H Lee. Um, so so he's uh, he he I might get, I might I might go uh, I might try to get canceled when playing because see Woo Kim K H Lee C T Pan lineup maybe. <laughs> <laughs> may, may, try, may try that one. Um, oh, just because of the initials. That's all it is. Right. Um, I might I might try that one. Um, but I don't see the need. I don't see the need. I, no, nobody under 7K really, really, um, really, really does it for me. Um, so let's 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 kind of reiterate and and let's let's this is what we do. We'll do we'll do who's gonna win, we're gonna do the normal thing. And then what I'm going to do also is I don't know if you have ownerships in front of you, but, but come up with also, I'm going to ask you for the best like ownership fade. In other words, like, which guy is just, you think is just the most over owned relative his chances to, to perform, you know? Okay. Um, okay. So let's start with, um, I mean, let's just start with who's winning. All right. Well, um, you, say Rory, if you think he's winning. It's totally fine. I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to not say Rory and I'm going to say, I'm going to get weird and say Leishman. I'm going to say Rory because I'm going to illustrate a point. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say Rory because I do think he's most likely to win. And I also don't think you're going to need him in your lineup if he does. So right. that just to illustrate that point, I am going to, I am going to think, I do think Rory's most likely to win. So, so we got Rory and then we have, we have, a, we have a Leishman flyer. So, yeah. so, so who under 10 K that you have not used, is you, you you make for a top five? Uh, for a top five, I'll say. Uh, I'm gonna say Terrell Hatton, and the only reason I didn't mention him when we were going through the range is just because he you know is one of the higher owned guys, but um, yeah. I I also really like him, so uh, I'll I'll say Terrell Hatton, and I will go with solid chalk uh, Russell Henley to make top five at ninety three hundred. What about under under nine k to make top ten? Now now you can have some fun. Under nine k to make top ten. I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Jason Day. Okay, so we're gonna flip a coin here. It's gonna be this guy or this guy. All right, it's gonna be Paul Casey. <laughs> I was gonna, it was gonna be Webb Simpson or Paul Casey. It ended up on Paul Casey. So Paul all Casey's right, gonna right. be the guy. Um, <laughs> under 8k to make top uh 20. Uh I'm gonna just steal him from you and say Johnny Vegas. And I will go um did mention all these, but I will top 20. I, I will I will go with the with the more conservative approach. I, I will go Brian Harmon for top for top twenty, okay. and may, and just set under seven k to make the cut. Who's your favorite of those six seven k's that you that you mentioned? Uh, under seven k to make the cut. I'm gonna just go Brandon Wu. And I, oh wait, under oh wait, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's not seven k. No, that's it's not. Oh, I was looking at the wrong. T I was looking at my notes, not the right. <laughs> I was looking at the right set of them. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we'll go. Oh, uh, Scott Piercy. Uh, under 7K, uh, just to make the cut. 
You know, I'll go with the guy that you talked about. I'll go with Ryan Armour. I'll go, I'll go nice. with him. Nice. I like All that. right. So who that's over 9K is going to miss the cut? Um, over 9K. Or 9K or over, whatever. All right. Well, if we can say 9K or over, I'm going to say Patrick Reed. I like that. Um, I, we're we're gonna we're gonna really have some fun here because what I always do is I pick my lowest rated nine k guy like on the list. Uh -huh. So just just for max fun, uh, I am gonna take Mark Leishman to miss the cup. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> since, since, since you picked him to win, I think that's perfect. Womp, womp. Love it. That's great. All right. And what and what do you and what do you and okay? So now now what you get to do is 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 you know using whatever ownerships you want. Um, who is the, in your opinion, like the most like over owned guy? Oh, it could be a ten percent guy. It could be yeah. A Let me. So guy. hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at your uh, projections here. Just make sure we're on the same page. Uh. Okay. Yeah, we're still right. Um. Yeah, I think it's by far and away Russell Henley. <laughs> I think that's probably true. I think yeah. that I'm going to go with a 15% owned Gary Woodland. I think that's what yeah, I Yeah, I like that too, actually. Yeah, I like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so so hopefully uh, um, hopefully every, somebody has a sweat this week. And, and again, as far as content goes, again, what, what, I, what I usually do is – is this I put up this stuff for the you know I'll I'll, I'll try to do an update like Wednesday uh, like later tonight um, with the latest updates or whatever it is and then if I it's, it's pretty selfish but if I'm still live going into Friday and Saturday I won't put up uh, showdown slates right? but right. but if if I'm dead then I'll probably put up a Saturday showdown slate <laughs> um, and, and 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 I'll always put up a Sunday showdown slate so so that that that'll always be up there. So, um, so let's, so, 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 so that means that given what we just said, that Mark Leishman is definitely making the cut and coming in 43rd. That's probably what <laughs> to make everybody wrong in every prediction. I think that's probably, but, right. uh, yeah, well, I, again, thanks. Thanks for coming in and, uh, let's, uh, let's get a good sweat this week. Let's go. All right. Later. Cheers. All right. Thanks.